Hello all, I am Siddharth Kaul and I welcome you to Edupedia world. In this video, we are going to take a look into function arguments. These are the variables that we pass to the function when we call them. We know the basics of function arguments. Function receives certain inputs from the calling commands and processes it. It may or may not produce output arguments. It depends completely on the function. So basically we already know what function argument is. So let's take a closer look at some of the other features MATLAB provides for these function arguments. First, let me start with showing you how to use the nargin and out. that is the number of argument input and number of argument output and how function receives argument using this. Using nargin, we can identify the number inputs, number of inputs that has been passed on to the function. Using nargin in switch case, we execute our statements based on the number of inputs that has been provided. A demonstration has been shown here in the addMe function. The addMe function can at maximum take two input arguments. Using an argin and a switch case, we type case number that represents number of inputs and write our statement for two inputs. So our addition would be a plus b as two distinct inputs are available. So for a single input, addition would be a plus a as only a single input is available. And for all other cases, we made the function return a zero. This is an alternate way of handling exceptions. So instead of asking user for more inputs, we work with the inputs that has been provided. Similar to an argin, we have an argout that identifies the number of output that has been requested by the user. Similar to previous addme, here I have an addme that function that can return one or two outputs. That is the result and the absolute result. Here first I have identified the number of inputs using an argin and then I have identified the number of output requested using an argout. So as a result is passed in each case. So when the need for second output arises, we check it using an argout and then pass the result. So here you can see there is an if case at the end of the function where we check whether the requested argument by the user is greater than one. If it is greater than one, then we also result an absolute result that is the absolute of the final output. There is a way to define a function that accepts a variable number of input argument using where arg in. Basically, this is a cell array that contains the function inputs and each input is in its own cell. As where arg in is a cell array, we can access the contents of each cell using curly braces. Let's take an example. Here I'm going to extend the plot function in a way that demonstrates the ease with which this where arg in can be used. The plot with title first checks for the number of inputs. If the function receives an odd number of input, it assumes that the last input is a title. The rest of the inputs are the inputs that will be passed to the plot function as done in the second last line of the code. This has been possible because of where our game being a cell array and indexing through curly braces allows for accessing the values and passing it to the plot function. The function is called through a command line as shown in the red box below. Data to be plotted is passed as argument pair x and y. As a function can take variable number of arguments, so it can be n number of pairs. The last argument is an option for title. If we want title to be other than the default one, we have to provide a title as the last option. Similar to having a variable number of inputs, we can define a function to return a variable number of output argument using where arg out. Again, this is a cell array that contains the function outputs where each output is in its own cell. Let's take an example. The one shown here, we made the function in a way that assigns a magic square to each of the requested output. So if one output is requested, it will output one one dimensional magic square. If two outputs are requested, then it will output one one dimensional square and one two dimensional magic square matrix and so on and henceforth. So for three output, it will be one one dimensional square, one two dimensional square and third one will be one three dimensional square matrix and so on. So using the n arc out, we come to know that how many output has been requested. And then accordingly, we loop and output the magic square to each of the cell of the cell area of where arg out. Then when we call like shown on the right right hand side with three outputs, we get three magic square matrices with 1D, 2D and three dimensional in size. We can also have our custom function check whether it receives a valid number of inputs or outputs. MATLAB does perform some argument checks automatically, but for the other, we have to use n arg in check or n arg out check. 
In cases where the number of inputs are defined in the function definition, MATLAB checks whether the function has received more number of arguments than expected. Uh, like for example, show here in the case shown here. So my function is the function definition that clearly says that three input arguments are expected. So if we pass more than three, say four arguments, then MATLAB throws an error saying that there are too many input arguments. This is the kind of basic and automatic check that MATLAB does and we don't require to use an arg in check and an arg out check functions to verify the inputs and the outputs. Apart from the automatic validation that MATLAB supports, we have an arg in check that allows us to validate or check the number of input arguments we have. Let me show you with an example. Here I have created a function test values that requires at least two inputs. The first input is a threshold value to compare against the other inputs. So what this program does is it takes the first input as a threshold and compares the subsequent input with this value and see if the test value exceeds the threshold and prints it. So at least so at least in this case two inputs are required. Here we define an n argin check that minimum input we require is two and the maximum input that user can give is infinite. When we call this function with two few inputs we get an like with only one input we get an error as not enough input arguments are provided. Like here we have called with a single input argument. Hence our n arg in check returns saying too few arguments are there. This is how n arg n arg in check works. This is basically number of argument input check function. Similar to what is n arg in check for inputs, we have n arg out check for outputs. Here also like n arg in check, we are def we are to define the minimum number of inputs user can ask for and the maximum number of outputs user can ask for. In this, in this example, we have the minimum number of inputs defined as zero and maximum number is dynamic that depends on the dimension of the array x that is passed. So if we pass a three dimensional matrix, we get at most four outputs. Same has been demonstrated here where we create an array A, a three dimensional random array and request four outputs. This is the full size, number of rows, number of columns and number of pages. Now there are cases where uh, when defining our function we must accept a predefined number or predefined set of inputs but uh, we will not be using those inputs the thing is that matlab does not allow certain function definition without those inputs so what we can do in these cases is that we can ignore those inputs ignoring inputs is done using a tilde operator I, uh, I here I don't have a very good example to demonstrate that but here I have taken something from the MATLAB help. This is basically a callback for a color button that requires to have object H and an event passed to it. As we will not be using the event we can ignore that using the tilde operator. Now the question arises is that we can just simply take the event data and then ignore it. So what tilde operator does is that it prevents the addition of the event data to the function workspace and makes it absolutely clear that function can never use that event data. So using tilde operator we can uh, ignore any number of inputs. We can ignore one inputs, two inputs, multiple inputs. It's all up to us. Now the parse function inputs. The reason I created this video was to demonstrate this feature of MATLAB. This is something cool. What I'm going to show is how to define required and optional inputs and assign the defaults to optional inputs and validate all these inputs using the input parser. So I'm going to go here step by step. Like this is divided into seven steps. So maybe you guys watching this can follow though uh, because I did not find a better way to present this in a single slide. The first step is to define our function. So we are going to create a function named print photo that has one required input for the file name and optional inputs for let's say the finish like if we want a glossy finish or matte finish for color space like we want RGB or CMYK and width and height. So in function definition we are going to specify file name as required and for optional we will use where arg in. Now the second step after creating the function definition is to create an input parser object. So we will create an object P that will be an input parser object. Now in step 3 we add the inputs to the parsing scheme. 
we can add required input, optional input or parameter input. For optional input, we are required to specify the default values. For each input, we can specify a handle to a validation function. This is something that can check the validation of the value that has been inputted. This can be an existing MATLAB function or a function that we create locally or anonymously. In this print photo function, file name is a required input. We will go ahead and define finish and color as optional input strings and width and height as an optional parameter value pairs. So for required, we have file name that should be character input only. Then we have optional finish input that can be either glossy or matte and we have made the default as glossy. Again another optional parameter is color RG like RGB and CMYK where the default is RGB. Then width and height are the parameters where check condition is that they should be numeric and their default has been defined. Now there are certain important points to remember. Inputs that are added with the add required or add optional uh, add optional met methods are positional arguments. What positional argument mean is that when we call a function with positional inputs we make sure that the values are in the same order as the inputs are added here. Whereas in add parameter arguments, these inputs are not positional. We can pass values for height before or after the values of width. But here we need to specify the input name like height and width. After that we have to follow that input with a value. Next step that is a step 4 is to set the properties of the parser. By default the input parser makes assumption about case sensitivity, function names, structure array inputs and whether to allow additional parameter names and values that are not in the scheme. Properties allows us to explicitly define the behavior regarding these. We set properties using dot notation. This is, this is something similar to assigning values to a structure array. Here we will allow print photo function to accept additional parameter value inputs that do not match this input scheme by setting the keep unmatched property of the input parser to two, true. I'm sorry, true. So we make it by uh, accessing the input parser or object that is p followed by the dot notation and the property name that is keep unmatched and provide it with the value of true. If it is kept false that is the default the input parser issues an error when inputs do not match the scheme. Now the next step is to pass the inputs that has been passed to the function. So we will call the function parse and pass the input parser object p and the inputs to the function. So in this case the inputs to the function is the required one that is the file name and all the optional arguments that are inside the cell structure where arg in. So our command will look like something as shown here. Now comes the step where we actually use the inputs that we pass to the function and which we have parsed. This input parser has three properties. First is the results. This is the structure array with the names and values of all inputs in the scheme. Then we have unmatched. Again a structure array with parameter names and values that are passed to the function but are not in the scheme. This is used when keep unmatched property is set to true. Then we have using defaults. This is a cell array with the names of optional inputs that are assigned their default values because they are not passed to the function. Their use is demonstrated in this slide. We use the value of file name and finish we want and check whether the unmatched is empty or not. And also we check for the defaults if no values for the optional value has been passed. Now comes the part where we actually call the function. Our input parserer expects to receive first the required input in the order that are added to the parsing scheme with function add required here in this case file name. Second thing input parserer expects is the optional positional inputs in the order that are added in the parsing scheme with the function add optional. Third it expects the positional inputs before parameter name and value pair inputs. Fourth it is all the parameter values. Those are passed in form name of the parameter followed by the parameter value. Here are several combos demonstrated. First one is where we call the function with only the required argument that is the file name. Rest all the things are taken on the default values. 
Second, we call the function with an incorrect value of argument passing double value of 100 in place of file name and we get in return an error stating that argument must be character. Third, we call the function with required argument and also pass an optional argument that is not valid. Our function throws an error stating that the input should match one of the two input values. Fourth is we call the function with the required file name and parameters. Here we pass the parameters with first the parameter name here in this case height and then the value that is 10 followed by the second parameter name width followed by the value that is 8. Last topic in this video I would like to take is about the validation functions for the input parser. We have used it in the steps I just demonstrated and will take a brief look into it. Now, we've, now we know that the input parser methods that is the add required, add optional and add parameter methods each take and accept an optional handle to a validation function. So this validation function accepts a single input argument and they either return a scalar logical value or an error. In cases when it returns a false and an error, the function stops processing indicating that the input provided to the function did not match. There are several ways to define a validation function. The first is shown here where the existing MATLAB functions such as isCharacter and isNumeric are used. Here in the add required method, we pass the handle to the isNumeric function for validator. Second, we can create an anonymous function. This has been demonstrated here. We can check the, that the input number is a numeric scalar value that is greater than zero. So we create an anonymous function that calls isNumeric, that is the existing functions and adds the condition that the number should be greater than zero. Then we pass the handle of the anonymous function that is the check num as a validator function to the add required method. Third way is we can create our own validator function. This is kind of a local function that lies in the same directory. Like say here in this example we have a use num function that defines a local function named check num that issues or returns custom error messages when input is not a numeric scalar greater than zero. This allows more, this basically allows us to send custom error messages back to the calling function. This concludes our video on function arguments. In the next video we are going to take a look at how to debug MATLAB code. So until then please subscribe and thanks for watching.